the top five questions for the AFC West. We are doing this brand new series where every week on every show, we will do the top five questions for each division. This week, it is the AFC West here on the Short Sports Show. First question, how will Ken Wisenhut step up the offense for the San Diego Chargers? Now, only two offensive coaches returned in 2012 in an overhauled coaching staff and a revamped offensive system that had quarterback Phillip Rivers release the ball earlier and taking what opposing defenses conceded. Now, Rivers was sacked 30 times compared to 49 the previous year and threw for 4,479 yards, 32 touchdowns, while tying a career high in a 105.5 passer rating. The reason we talked about 2012 is in the 2013 season is because that's when Ken Wisenhunt was there before he left for becoming the head coach at the Tennessee Titans. And San Diego's rushing attack also improved the prior season uh, from the prior season's 1,461 yards and 3.6 yards per carry. That tied second worst in the league to 1,965 yards and a four-yard average. Although they were speculated to have a poor, disappointing season and getting off to a shaky start, the Chargers finished in the top eight of overall standings. Rivers was named the NFL Comeback Player of the Year. Keenan Allen broke out to the national scene as a rookie sen sensation, breaking multiple wide receiver rookie records. And then that's when Wisenhunt left at the conclusion of the season to become the head coach of the Tennessee Titans. He is now back with the San Diego Chargers and taking up this offense that, well, once again, failed rushing. They had... Uh, what, four total rushing touchdowns last season with rookie and first-round draft pick Melvin Gordon having a big goose egg. So now Ken Wisenhut steps in and has to transform this offense back to what it used to be. Thing is, I am not liking what the Chargers did with the draft and free agency to address the offensive side of the ball. Offensive line, if they could stay healthy, can real can be a really stable offensive line, with, especially with Ken Wisen up being at the head coach, or excuse me, at the offensive coordinator position. He should put in the plays that best suit this offense. Melvin Gordon is a, a talented running back. He is a first round running back. He's not a bust, but I'm not going to put all the blame on him, and I'm not necessarily not going to blame him for the lack of progress or whatever you want to say, performance of last season. Phillip Rivers cannot do this on his own. The receivers are not there for the Chargers. Keenan Allen is not a number one receiver on any team. Sadly, that's exactly what he, did, what he is for the San Diego Chargers. Chargers need more weapons. I, they get it. They got Hunter Henry to, to, at some point, take Antonio Gates' spot when he's gone, possibly next year. But that can't be it. You can't rely just on a target. You can't rely on him being next Rob Gronkowski because there might not be a next Rob Gronkowski. You need some more receivers. The Chargers do not have that, or at least consistent receivers. This is going to be a problem. How will Ken Wisenhut step up this offense for the Chargers? Well, doing the things that we just talked about. Finding the right offensive system that's going to work for these uh, offensive linemen and the players that he has. Is it going to be a huge jump in uh, progress in the performance? Possibly not. Possibly not. As a Chargers fan, this sucks, but you know, management hasn't really done the best job with this team. And they're wasting Phillip Rivers' window for Super Bowl is very, very small now. Next is, will the Oakland Raiders defense be more consistent? Now, the Oakland Raiders, they lost five of their nine games by less than a touchdown last season in 2015. That shows hope, but it also shows the lack of consistency with their entire team and not being able to close out games. With the addition of multiple defensive stars in the offense, or in the offseason, excuse me, there's a lot of potential, a lot of hype that the Raiders could have a stellar defense in 2016 with a multiple clickbait articles that say, can the Raiders defense be like the Broncos defense? Obviously, Khalil Mack will continue to pressure uh, the opposing quarterback, and Bruce Irvin is going to make a great compliment on the other side. DB is a question due to health and overall lack of play. 
but I believe the Raiders can find a niche on that defense to be more consistent. And I don't think they're going to have nine losses next year. Possibly go 10 and 6 next season, maybe even 11 and 5. I think the time for the Raiders being in the, in, in the, in the cellar is not going to be much longer. I think it's done. I think they're out of the cellar. They're in the living room right now. And they're trying to get out. Uh, okay. Terrible analogy. Whatever. I believe the Raiders would be more consistent defensively and find some type of groove because you know the offense is going to do its thing. Derek Carr, Amari Cooper, the running back rotation that they have, offensive line getting better, the accusations, uh, not the accusations, uh, but the additions they had to that offensive line is going to make the team better. And maybe find another receiving target would have helped, but hey, they might be able to get some things done. Next question. Can Alex Smith lead the Chiefs to the promised land? Now, the Chiefs went through a poor start the first six games of the season as they were 1-5, and five and they lost their star running back in Jamal Charles to a torn ACL in his right knee during a 18-17 victory, or excuse me, loss in Week 5 at home against the Chicago Bears. So it looked like everything was gone for them. Everything was done. They were just going to be way at the bottom would they even win another game because they've lost some really bad games but in week 16 you fast forward to that they had just won their ninth consecutive victory and with the baltimore ravens defeating the pittsburgh steelers the chiefs clinched the playoff berth their second in three years so he's, alex smith has taken them to the playoffs each time in two of the past three years and has made some steps but they could never get over the hump. They, they lost the wild card spot. And then I, what they lost it. Then they lose it. No, that wasn't division. It was wild card against the Colts. That was a crazy game. But last year, the Chiefs defeated the Houston Texans 30 to nothing for their first playoff win in 22 years. The following week, they were defeated by the New England Patriots 27 to 20. They were close. They were there. Alex Smith threw for 3,486 yards, 20 touchdowns, and seven interceptions. The timing is now for the Chiefs, or else that window will close soon. Alex Smith isn't getting any younger. The defensive star players aren't getting any younger either. It's going to come a time where contracts are going to come up. We already had the situation, Tom Bahali and Justin Houston. It'll happen again. And then you already have a star in the making at defensive back. Uh, but the guy, of course, I can't remember his name. <laughs> when this, I'm making an important video and I can't remember his name. Uh, the guy from UW. Yeah. I can't. 22. Uh, he, you know, the contracts are going to come up for him in another, what, three years from now. Chiefs timing to win in the playoffs is now. And I think they can get it done. But can they get over the hump? Can they beat the, the Patriots? And most likely, could they beat them on the road? Could they beat them, beat them in Foxborough? I don't know. I don't know. What will the Broncos be like in 2016? The offseason thus far has been dominated by quarterback controversy following the retirement of Brock, uh, excuse me, Peyton Manning and Brock Osweiler. Manning's backup during the past four seasons has signed with the Houston Texans as a free agent. Mark Sanchez was acquired in a trade with the Philadelphia Eagles. And the Broncos selected Paxton Lynch during the first round of the draft. Now, Sanchez and Lynch and second-year quarterback Trevor Simon are expected to battle for the starting quarterback position during the offseason and preseason. But eh, is it gonna, who is it going to be? And could these guys get it done? Now, a lot of people are optimistic about it, saying this offense is going to fit any of these quarterbacks, that even Trevor Simon could be the starting quarterback and lead this team to the playoffs, which I highly disagree I disagree that I, I I don't disagree that this offense can fit the quarterback, but do I believe that any of these three quarterbacks can lead this Broncos team to the playoffs and win multiple playoff games? No, not at all. Not at all. No, thank you. No, sir. No, ma'am. Not at all. But who gives them the most upside? Obviously, Lynch. Is it smarter to sit him under Sanchez? Absolutely. Because you know if Mark Sanchez is benched at the beginning of the season, 
He is not going to help Paxton Lynch in any way. It's just going to be a terrible locker room situation. And that is the last thing the Broncos need right now as they just started what could be a pretty good, and I'm not going to say dynasty or franchise, but could start setting some big things in the movement. So, obviously, Trevor Simon, just shut up. Sit down. Paxton Lynch, take the clipboard, learn this preseason, learn this season, and take next season, you know, 2017, as your way to start. No need to rush it. You also have Super Bowl MVP Von Miller. Will he actually sit the entire 2016 season because he doesn't like several million dollars guaranteed he wants more will he actually sit out because of the contract situation i don't believe he will but we've seen crazy things happen and well people are just greedy nowadays positives about the broncos is i like the running back rotation they're gonna have they kept ronnie hillman they kept cj anderson both returning but in addition to that is Devontae Booker, the running back out of Utah that they selected in the uh, second or third round or fourth round. I don't remember. They selected him in the draft. And before he got hurt, he was a very dynamic player, catching out of the backfield, rushing. He was a exciting player. He was, he was even uh, in a Heisman hype early in the season when Utah was undefeated. I really like Devontae Booker, and I believe he's going to bring something very interesting to this running back rotation. Uh, obviously, the Broncos will uh, have most questions unanswered hit it, heading into the 2016 season. But will they quickly be figured out? Well, they, they will be quickly figured out, for better or worse, when the season kicks off. Also, I like Braylon Addison. He's an undrafted free agent out of Oregon. Uh, he should be exciting to that wide receiver position. The slot next to uh, Am- Emmanuel Sanders should be interesting. Um Finally, the last question is, who will win the AFC West? We're going to make our early predictions now, our preseason predictions right now. And I'm going to say that the Kansas City Chiefs will win the division. Now, I don't believe. No, I did. I did. I don't know if the camera can see it up there. I got this on YouTube. I have the Kansas City Chiefs, the Oakland Raiders, the Denver Broncos, the San Diego Chargers. In that, and I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, no, the Broncos are still going to win. They still have a great defense. Uh, you know, they're just different quarterback. They didn't even play that well. I get it. But the Chiefs are getting better. The Raiders are getting better. Chargers, I mean, they sucked last season, so they can only get better, I would hope. Broncos, on the other hand, we are, they are what they are. They are what they are. So, that is leading the question now to you to let me know who you believe will win the AFC West in 2016. Will it be the Denver Broncos repeating? Will it be the Oakland Raiders getting their first winning season? Or will it be the Kansas City Chiefs? Because I know it's not the San Diego Chargers, so I'm not even going to bring them name up. But let me know in the comment section down below as we continue on. What's up? I've got some amazing news. You can now buy the short sports show apparel on Teespring. That's right. I have two different designs up already, and they're amazing, and I love them, and I know you guys will love them too. Hurry now, as these shirts are only up for a certain number of days, and then they're gone. My goal is to sell at least 50 of each design, and the more they sell, the longer they're available. So help me make that happen. Teespring is a platform that makes it easy for anyone to create and sell high-quality products that people love with no cost or risk. So go to www.teespring.com slash stores slash the short sports show today and after you make your purchase tweet the show for a chance to be on the following week's show with me now back to the show 